I'm Victoria Wellesby, TEDx speaker, best-selling author, and fat activist. I have transformed my life from hating my body with desperately low self-esteem to being a courageous and confident, fierce fatty who loves every inch of this jelly. Society teaches us living in a fat body is bad, but what if we spent less time, money, and energy on the pursuit of thinness and instead focused on the things that actually matter, like if pineapple on pizza should be outlawed or if the mullet was the greatest haircut of the 20th century? So how do you stop negative beliefs about your fat body controlling your life? It's the Fierce Fatty Podcast. Let's begin. All right, so hey everybody, welcome to Death to Tired Diets. If you're tuning in live, feel free to give us a, a clap or a or a other noise. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, a uh, quick announcement before we get started is that I wasn't able to change it in the app, but there's been a change to my identity, and that is I'm I'm non-binary, that's not the change, but my new name is Vinny, V-I-N-N-Y. I've not been able to update the screen thing here, so it still says Victoria. Victoria is not like a dead name to me, it's just, you know, Vinny's, Vinny's just has been a nickname of mine since I was like 14. I gave it to myself, hello, giving myself a stereotypical male name, like there's a clue about what was going on in my brain. <laughs> Yay, well... I'm excited. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Simba, what are we talking about today? Well, Vinny, should we just do a quick reintroduction of what the show is about and who we are? Uh, yes, please. Go on. You go for it. Okay. So, uh, this is our show, Death to Diets. I am Summer Inanen. I am a professionally trained coach, and I specialize in helping people with body image, self-worth, and confidence. And uh, we each have our own podcasts and, and shows and, and stuff, but we wanted to get together to do this show together to really talk about the ridiculousness of diets and the impact of diet culture on people. And we are not here to make fun of people who diet. We are here to poke holes at um, the problem with the culture of dieting. Uh, so if you're a dieter, we're not making fun of you or shaming you. No, we are. We are. <laughs> Joking, 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 joking. Uh, yes. Can I you? Yeah, so I'm Vinny Owellsby. Um, I'm just updating the fortune cookie, Summer. Uh, maybe, Summer, you can update the fortune co cookie while I'm uh, while I'm talking. Um, so I'm Vinny Wellsby. I'm a fat activist, uh, TEDx speaker, best-selling author, all-around incredibly good-looking human being, friend of Summer. And um, yeah, Summer and I believe that it's okay to be fat, that diets suck balls and um, diet culture can just eat our swinging tits. And uh, so that is what uh, Death to Diets is, is, is forcing diet culture to suck our swinging tits, basically. Isn't that right, Summer? I mean, that's, I feel like that's really the tagline you should put on your website. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Have you considered updating that? <laughs> yeah. I'm swinging tits. Yeah. And I've noticed today, actually, my top is, um, uh, I, I've, I'm fatter than when I wore this top before. And it's like stretched really thin and you can see my bra underneath. And I'm just like, I'm feeling very Kim Kardashian today, you know? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You can see I the see orange bra. Can you see my orange bra? I, I can. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering because I wasn't sure. <laughs> If you had just put on too much self tanner, or yeah. <laughs> no, I just have orange tits. Um, okay, so well, everyone's uh, going to head over to YouTube to watch the replay. Oh, so <laughs> I said everyone's going to head over to YouTube to watch the replay of the video. Right. Now that you see these globes, these orange <laughs> globes. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so while I'm thinking about it, a uh, quick trigger warning: we're going to be talking about diets, which are. 1 billion percent fucked up today and so if that's not feeling good for you and you don't want to hear about uh the actual what's inside the diet like the in the instructions they, they're ridiculous by the way they're ridiculous so if that's not feeling good for you today then uh just a heads up to to maybe go and uh, do something else or watch something else 
Yeah, totally. I feel like this is important because we are going to be getting into the ridiculous uh, specifics of a couple of different things that we've seen recently. Uh, this is January. We're being inundated with the worst of the worst in terms of diet ads. And uh, we both came across a couple of things that we just could not believe were real. And, uh, and so that we're, we're unpacking some of that today, as well as like getting into some of the, you know, the feedback from some of you in terms of what's the most ridiculous thing that you've ever seen or done as it relates to dieting. Um, and so, yeah, just reiterating, you know, if you're in eating disorder recovery, if you find this stuff triggering or it's going to make you want to actually restrict food or do any of that, then tune out, please. Tune out. You said it wrong. You said tune with T-O-O-N, Summer. It's C-H-U-N-E. Tune out. Like a what? British person. Like a British <laughs> Hello. So, phonetically, they're different. Yeah, they're different. <laughs> You say tune and I say tune. Tune. Uh, tune. Please tune out. Tune out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, Summer, tell us the first thing that you found that you were like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So I saw a couple of people posting about this. It was something called 75 Hard, which, um, you know, just off the bat, you kind of get a feeling that it's like going to be 75 days, obvious. And it, uh, it makes me think, when I think 75 hard, it just makes me think of an erection. It just makes me think of a penis. I, I was penis. thinking of a hard do, but that's because my oh. child was me a lot of conversations. So. You, you do the hard poop, I'll go for the hard dick. I'd rather have a hard dick than a hard poop. I don't know. <laughs> I know your preferences. You do what you do, you, Summer. If you want to have a hard, hard poop, that's great. <laughs> anyway, so 75 are hard. Yeah, so I looked into it and it's essentially, it is 75 days, so there's no, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Um, and it's you, you follow a diet, you get to pick your own diet, but it has to be strict. So and flexible, so flexible. Oh my God, loving it so far. Yeah, and you know, it's, it, and then, okay, let me go through the rules first and then, yeah, so yeah, you have to pick a diet and no cheat days, not even one otherwise you have to go back to day one and start all over in addition to that it's you work out not once a day twice a day every day for 75 days um one of those must be outdoors what? it doesn't matter what the weather is because What's that got to do with it? what the heck has that got to do with anything and who who is able to do this people without jobs two workouts a day for 45 minutes each so what you know, you think an hour and a half plus like, you know, whatever to get ready for it, to finish it, to shower and like, yeah, you're pretty much investing your whole day, your, your life. And like, you don't sleep, no, yeah. which is why there's no sleep rule. I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> you're just working out. Pumping yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And no, no, I'll, I'll circle back to this after, but this is actually like when I had an eating disorder, this is kind of what I did. And so that's why this is like so horrible because really? but I couldn't even keep this up. Like I could never even do it this many days in a row. Like it was like, you know, a couple days a week or something. But um, the reason why it has to be outside is because you can't always control things in your life, like the weather. And so it's about building up mental toughness. That's what this is about. It's, it's oh. like a mental thing yeah oh yeah. right science sounds scientific <laughs> yes yeah. uh-huh yep yep okay makes mm -hmm. total sense sarcasm yes Continue. <laughs> no no cheat meals no alcohol um you have to drink a gallon of water a day why why where where does this fucking water shit come from summer like uh <laughs> Well, you're probably going to be pretty thirsty if you're working out for an hour and a half every day. This is true. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So maybe that's what it is. It's like you're going to be fucking exhausted. You're going to be so tired from all the working out. You're not going to be able to eat. You'll just be able to lie on your sofa and drink that gallon of water because that's all you can be able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you have to read 10 minutes of a nonfiction book. No audiobooks allowed. What? <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Non-fiction, non-fiction, non-fiction. Yeah. So, Why? Yes. Yeah, so Why? Like Self-help, like. Okay, so fiction books are inferior. 
the, the fiction books are not going to help you lose weight mm-hmm. and audio books are not going to help you lose weight mm-hmm. but non-fiction that is where the shit is read that non-fiction book you're going to be thin as fuck Makes here's, the, here's the kicker is that mm-hmm. they, they claim am i like i don't i'm not gonna say this person's name <laughs> random meathead <laughs> yeah. um, it, the, the, they they say that this is not actually about weight loss and oh. yet one of the last the final rule is you have to take a transformation picture every day <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I that, not about weight loss make mm-hmm. any sense Mm. at all yeah, <laughs> Why are taking yeah. pictures wow <laughs> yeah i yeah. love i love it when they they're like not about weight loss we're anti-diet but um eat fucking nothing work out 75 hours a day and take pictures of your body every single day not about weight loss not about weight loss it's like it's like it's almost like they think if they whisper the word weight loss then uh, if they don't then people are going to be like oh, this is all about health. And, and you know, they're going to get under the radar of, of the bullshit radar. But luckily we're here to decode it. Although I don't think this one summer needed that much decoding that it's a bullshit. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty obvious. And, like, what I find, what I found so shocking about this, like, so, you know, I've done my fair share of diets. I've done them all. And, you know, usually there there's, like, you know, they're like 21 days, 30 days, like this, this, it's almost like someone came in and was like, yeah, I'm just going to pick a random number and like yeah. make this into a thing. And this is literally like an eating disorder. This isn't like, th- this is like a prescription for an eating disorder. Like if someone came to me and they said, this is what I'm doing, I would probably refer them to like a, an eating disorder clinic or a specialist because this is so, um, beyond like this is beyond you know kind of a typical diet this is this is like really putting your body into this extreme extremely stressful state of deprivation and the idea that like what happens after day 75 like then 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 what you know like if you have any sh- like your body's not going to stay at that weight mm-hmm. no way it, if even- you And 75 is the shortest amount of days it could be because, you know, you're getting to day 30 and you, um, I don't know, eat some food or don't go and work out in the snowstorm and you have to go back to day one. So 75 is the minimum amount of days that that they're saying you need to do this bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And and then what? Like, I just, I mean, I feel bad. I don't want to say I pity people, but like, we both know the outcome of this. You are yeah. either getting an eating disorder and staying that way, or you are, your body's going to like really backfire on you and you're going to just feel like a absolute failure and mm-hmm. feel even worse. Um, yeah. And how like, uh, just even the fucking reading thing, like saying this, that certain type of reading is more superior to another type of reading. It's like, things that should bring you pleasure or fun or, you know, education, even that's being judged. And so what are you left with? Like when you, when you stop this, this ridiculousness, then you're left with being like, I'm a piece of shit because I only drank three quarters of a gallon of water and I read, I listened to an audio book for an hour. So I'm a piece of shit, you know, because I'm not doing this hard 75 bollocks. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, I I mean, it just it goes to show that, you know, although some days I feel like we're making some headway with the message of, you know, you don't need to diet and diets are really harmful and, and all this other stuff. You see something like this and you see how things just keep getting more extreme. Like it, you know, like it it's like taking it's like, what's next? It's going to be like 100 days and then it's going to be you know, 365 days. And then, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just like the obsession just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And, uh, and obviously this person is only going to likely in some capacity profit off of this ultimately mm-hmm. and profit off of the fact that people fail and think that they have to keep coming back and starting over from day one because they're not tough enough and all this other bullshit. 
Mm. And Summer, this guy, this uh, this guy, this delightful human being, um, do we know anything about his potential political leanings? <laughs> this is think? very superficial research. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to wager to bet that they are leaning to a different side than we are. <laughs> to summer i don't believe it i, I, believe it. I, I feel believe it. there might be some 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 alignment there definitely some anti-vax mm. propaganda oh yeah love a bit of the anti-vax stuff yeah just um mm -hmm. it's amazing amazing this you know that i'm on the dating scene summer you've told me all about him i want to meet him can you introduce me <laughs> I just, I'm actually like afraid that <laughs> I just, I'd rather, I'm, I don't even want to say the person's name because I just. I mean, you know, could you imagine if someone looks angry day? all the time? Oh, he looks angry all the time. Oh, it's because he's fucking hungry and tired and needs a nap. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a bear coming out of hibernation. <laughs> like, oh my God. And so you, did you, did you have this advertised to you? Um, no, I, I saw it like in a couple of places like mentioned. And, um, and so I, I was like, Ooh, what is this? No, Ooh, it sounds not advertised to me. Uh, my, my advertising settings are pretty locked down. Oh, really? What's your, um, do you have like a trick so that you're not advertised with all this bullshit? I, I, I mean, you just go, I, I would just go and check my settings in, in social media, like every once mm -hmm. in a while. And then, um, like always like report things as misleading or scam or, or, uh, violent. And mm. I don't know. Do you still, you still get out ads for this stuff all the time? I or? do, but less because I changed my gender to male on Facebook. Oh, isn't that interesting? Uh huh. And now I get like some cool ads for like you know meat and leather and shit like that, you know. So I'm like, okay, yes. Maybe that's why I started re eating meat again recently, summer. <laughs> I've been you after did? it because I was a vegetarian for like eight years, and recently I started eating meat because it just popped into my head of I want to eat meat, and maybe it's because I've been advertised to by oh my gosh, male. that's hilarious. Yeah, my, my husband gets ads for so many cooler things than me. But when that iOS went through the updates, I, I left it so they could track me for the specific purpose that I wanted to be advertised things that I'm actually interested in instead of just random stuff that they think like a 40 year old woman would want, which yeah. so that probably helps because I don't go to like any of the websites that would have, you know, diets on them. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what, though, I was reading about how advertisement works and it's a lot of it is where you go physically and who you spend time with. And so say if you went to your mum's house and your mum uses a certain brand of toothpaste and she bought it on her loyalty card. And so it's trapped on her loyalty card and you went to her house and spent a week there, then you're more likely to get an advertisement for that toothpaste come up on your feed. And so probably because neither of us are really spending that much time with dieters we don't yeah. get a lot of that stuff coming up but yeah. we probably do interact with them on social media yeah fair, maybe ah. i don't know so, it helps that i'm a recluse <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you don't even have any friends somewhere i'm not even your friend i'm just here out you're my only friend <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay should we talk about what you saw yeah, so the I was targeted with an advertisement and I was just so fucking excited because when I saw it, I was like, what is this shit? So the advertisement I saw was a video of people smiling, like really big smile and then putting something on their arm. And when they put the thing on their arm, they, they winced. They always like ah, through the smile, like a wince. And I was like, what is this? And it was like, lose weight, like um, with science. And so I had a look into it and I discovered that diet culture has stolen a diabetes tool. And so a diabetes uh, management tool that people who are diagnosed with diabetes, it's called a continuous glucose monitoring system, CGM, continuous glucose monitoring. 
And what it is, it's a, um, a patch where a needle is inserted into your skin and um, your blood glucose levels are monitored. And a wonderful piece of equipment for people who have diabetes, uh, <laughs> really important because um, some people will use it because they might have a hard time monitoring their blood sugar levels for whatever reason, or maybe are not able to communicate uh, what their blood sugar levels are doing. And also it's just nice to have that as a source of information for people who have diabetes, because the results of not knowing what's going on with your blood sugars if you have diabetes is, you know, you could potentially die or have, have uh, uh, bad side effects. So diet culture saw this shit and was like, Oh, how can we use this to make money and uh, tell people that, that they need to have it? And so um, I've been poking around the website, which means that I've been getting so many of their adverts now, which is really fucking annoying. They're like, oh, they're so close to buying. I'm like, no, bitch. I am so, so far away from buying. <laughs> um, yeah. And with this is with this tracking device um diabetic people have been using it for years and and just an fyi uh, it's it's cost prohibitive for a lot of uh, diabetic people because um it's expensive especially in uh, north america um and so you think okay so there's probably a lot of good evidence to show that this helps with weight loss what do you reckon summer uh i'm gonna go with no for a hundred dollars <laughs> No, <laughs> no for a hundred dollars. Some of you are correct. Of course, there isn't any evidence to show this is going to uh, help people lose weight. What it will help you lose, though, is a shit ton of money. Uh, because for two weeks, um, the first two weeks costs you a hundred and seventy five dollars. And so that's three hundred and fifty bucks a month to have this thing stuck on your arm, um, monitoring your glucose levels. And so what they're saying this does is it will tell you when you are allowed to eat and when you have to exercise. And so, you know, the whole using external cues to, to work out when you should eat and force you to exercise is always so great for your mental health. <laughs> so good for your mental health. It's a great um, use of time. Say that again. I said it's a great use of time. It is. It is. And it tells you, guess how often it tells you what your uh, blood glucose levels are. Is it like every three hours? Try every 15 minutes. Oh, oh my God. Every fucking 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> They are telling you what to do. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I just had a quick look around their website to see, you know, all of the science that they've got. And I just wanted to give you the, the, the beginning of, of an article that I, I read. And um, I want you to maybe, Summer, you can give me a little kind of shout out of a bullshit when you hear something which doesn't sound like it is backed up with evidence. And... Anyone listening, if you want to give a, I don't know, some type, I don't know, some type of emoji, like a, a shit sound or something. When you there's hear, a poo one. Yeah, there's a poo one. There's yeah. a poo one. When you hear something uh, from this little, I'm, it's, it's just a little thing. Why? This isn't the title of it. How glucose tracking can effectively manage your weight is, is the name of it. So get re settle in for story time. Remember, Summer, shout out when you hear a little bit of bullshit. If you only remember one point from this article, let it be this. Being a healthy weight helps us live longer. <laughs> Happier that's my, lives. That's my bullshit horn. Yeah. <laughs> Happier lives. Would you say that you're happier than me because, because of your weight, Summer? No. no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lo losing extra weight is proven to reduce cancer. And heart yeah. disease. No, no, that's going to yeah. be a... <laughs> and guess what? Losing weight increases focus and energy. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a no. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be one. Um, though we often take up weight loss for surface reasons, who doesn't want to look better? <laughs> right, girls? Uh, it's long-term wellness that keeps us going. Being a healthy weight feels good. Thankfully, we now have a tool to cut through confusion built into various weight loss programs. Better than even, better than even calorie counting. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. that's a low bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we can choose the best path to weight loss. I mean, like just the thing, this is the, set, the start of this, this thing saying how you can effectively manage your weight. I mean, if they had found something to make fat people thin, this would be world breaking, like massive, massive news because there is not one single scientific study to show any type of diet works. And so if a group of scientists had found something that worked, that would be huge news, huge news. But you know, they're not, they're not mentioning any of the science that they've got because they don't have any science. Um, yeah, and so that is what that is about. But you know what, Summer, something that gave me great happiness was the Facebook comments. That was, yeah, hands down, when you said that to me, I was like, these comments, I'm like, thank goodness. Again, it shows that some things are changing. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, because I tagged you in it and I was like, look at this bullshit. And then I looked at the other comments and um, everyone was like, what the fuck is, not everyone, like I'd say 80% of people. <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of the top comments were people saying like, this is for people with diabetes. Like I have type one diabetes. There's no way, like no one wants to wear this thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like <laughs> if your pancreas is doing its job, you don't need this. It's like, yeah. So a lot of people were really, really mad. The only upside I see to a device like this is um, if there's more in production, then it might lower the cost for people with, with diabetes. And that's the only upside. And so, I mean, if rich people want to spend a gajillion um, dollars on this thing, I mean, go for it. I mean, you know, it's not going to be great, but, um, but yeah. Um, so there's one thing that I wanted to mention because pe some people in the comments were like, oh, well, um, it's a good thing because if you can monitor your blood glucose to see if you might develop diabetes, like, you know, the diagnosis of pre-diabetes. Have you got uh -huh. any, uh, yeah. any thoughts on that, Summer? Yeah, I think that I'm not the expert on that. I have like a podcast episode coming up with a couple experts. Oh, do you? Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but from what I understand, the likelihood if you have that is it's not like super high that you're actually going to develop diabetes. And diabetes is so much of it is genetic. Mm. Um, and therefore, like... I don't think this tool is really the the answer to, you know, trying to either manage, um, like to, trying to prevent it. I think there's other ways that are going to be a lot more economical and sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And I always thought like with pre-diabetes, um, I was like, oh, OK, well, then, you know, that's probably a good indicator that you're probably it's probably, you know, it's probably going to develop into diabetes. But According to the CDC, fewer than, okay, let's do a little guess. What percentage of people who are diagnosed with pre-diabetes do we think develop into type 2 diabetes? I, isn't it like 7% or something like that? Lower. Is it? Is it 5? Lower. <laughs> Is it 3? Lower. Is it 1? Fewer than 2% of people with the pre-diabetes -di pre diagnosis, develop type 2 diabetes 
according to CDC, according to oh, the CDC. Oh, wow, okay. Isn't, okay. isn't that bananas? And, and um, uh, it's, the same with, um, it's the same with the BMI. You know how the BMI categories overnight was changed? Mm -hmm. The categories for what classes, classifies someone as um, having diabetes and not having diabetes, uh, same thing. Drug companies were like, well, let's make some more money from these motherfuckers. They same change. thing, lower the category. <laughs> And that's that's what it is. So, uh, yeah. wow, mm -hmm. wow. What I found so ridiculous about this is like, like what's like what's next? Like, is it that you're just gonna have, um, you know, like wires attached to your head and like a heart monitor? Like, do you want to be treated as if you're ill when you're not? <laughs> to yeah. try to prevent illness. Like, I. I just don't get, um, like, I mean, I, I understand why people buy this because you want to like, you know, like I said, the desire to lose weight is like an innocent response to living in the, the culture that we live in. And it's like, you know, what's next? Like if you have to monitor something every 15 minutes, like what, what else? You have to track all your steps. You have to load all your food into a thing. Like, like there, we're literally being treated like we're robots mm. when none of this stuff actually has the validity to it. And all pe people were just existing <laughs> just fine before all of this all of this stuff came along, but it's all just capitalizing on people's fear, like people's fear of gaining weight, people's fear of, um, you know, being, being fat and all this stuff. And it's like, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's really predatory. Like it's ultimately mm. really predatory. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all this like biohacking trend as well of, of I have control. I have ultimate control over my health. And if I biohack, myself and my health well enough then i'll live forever for as you know as long as i can but the truth is most of our health is completely out of our control and it's to do with uh socio-economic status it's to do with the color of our skin it's to do with our uh, uh our sexual orientation our exposure to guns so many different things but you don't see health companies being like do you know what we're gonna make you healthy by uh, trying to end racism because they ain't gonna make their money. It's gonna make them yeah, lose. Yeah. Them. Well, and who who are they trying to make healthy here? Like people who obviously have the resources to pay three hundred and fifty dollars a month to invest in something like this, let alone like all the other stuff that you probably have to invest in to try to you know whatever. It's like the superfoods or yes. you know, supplements and all these other all these other things, and like it's really ultimately just using so much time and energy that could be dedicated to other endeavors you know mm -hmm. like when i was a chronic dieter it was a full-time job it was literally yeah. like a full-time job on top of my full-time job that's all i did yeah. and if you you know now that i don't have that it's like you you don't realize how much time and energy goes goes into that and and how how much that takes away from, from really living. It's like what you want to be like so healthy and extend your life, but for, for what to spend more time yeah. tracking stuff? Like what yeah. is that living? Like, is that, is that the life that we want? Yeah. I mean, not, yeah. For me. not for me, not for me either. It sounds like a load of dog shit. And those two <laughs> nasty ass diets can what? Suck our swinging tits. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, for so, sure, like, for sure. I, for sure, for sure, for um, sure. When I was reading about this thing, I admit that there was a little part of me that was like, ooh, maybe this would work. Why do you think that is? Maybe summer? this time it'll be, it's mm -hmm. the what, the shiny object syndrome is what you, what you call mm -hmm. it, right? Like, mm -hmm. maybe, and this is the thing, it hits that dopamine, it's like, ooh maybe this time will be different. And it gives you that sense of like potential hope. And that's what's so deceptive about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. imagine like if, you know, me, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, if I had 350 bucks to spare, I can imagine myself being like, oh my God, it's only 350 bucks and then I'll be thin. 
and then I'll find a great boyfriend and then I'll get a great job and then I'll be walking down the street and just feeling so confident. 350 bucks, it's nothing. And, and that hope of what could that buy me? But now, thank fuck, um, I feel able to decode this bullshit and kind of sift through all of that language to say, is it? Is, is it? Because I don't think so. I'm not so sure that it is. Yeah. And I understand. I mean, and like, here's the thing is that you, you've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for a long time. And, but it's still like, there's still like that little, like, maybe, you know, Mm. maybe. And I totally, I probably would have worn that thing back in the day because I would have thought that was like the answer, you know, like the one thing that's finally going to help me like, you know, lose the weight once and for all. Um, and, uh, and, and it's just like, it's a shame that there's always going to be something new like this, uh, probably in our lifetime. I may not hope not, but. Mm. Yeah. 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 And I think the, the one thing, the one thing that I am, I always go back to is, is what evidence do we have? What long-term evidence do we have? Because uh, the articles that I was reading by this company and similar companies were, oh, we tracked people for a week. We tracked, <laughs> people for two weeks and it showed that it, they lost weight and the golden like number that we want to look at is three to five years minimum and so has this product been around for minimum three to five years with follow-up results with also tracking data from people who fell off who who um didn't finish the diet because their their bodies were like I don't, this is not for me, not because that they were bad or lazy or anything like that. Um, because a lot of the times diet companies will say, oh, we've got an 80% success rate of the two people who stayed around from the study out of the 100 people and the study was three weeks long. And so um, to just do a very little look, a very short, quick look into the science will make you uh, know like, oh, is this good science or is this a load of bullshit? Yeah, and I think it's easy to think that, like, maybe you'll be that one person, (laughs) you know? Like, maybe I'll be that one person. But I think you have to look at your own personal history, too. What has your experience been with it? What have you done before? Knowing that none of those failures or, like, the, the, the lack of success with those diets was your fault. I mean, it's, like, the reason why they drop those people out of the studies, they blame it on, they make it, like, a personal responsibility thing. But really, it's because your body is biologically wired to fight back against it. Yeah. And um, you're not meant to, you're not meant to stay in a, a state of, of, of restriction. And it's like, it's a lifetime membership. Like if you start that, you have to keep that up for the rest of your life. If you want to yeah. stay that way. And even then you probably won't. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's oh. like, it's not just like, it's never a short term uh, thing. It's never 30 days. It's never 75 days. It's never, you know, two weeks. It's all, it's like, you're, you're like, uh, I would have to, you'd have to do that for the rest of your life. And I think that's a thing, something to really ask yourself. It's like, do I want to do that? Can I do that? And 95% of people aren't going to be able to do that because their body's just going to fight back. And the other 5% are probably going to have an eating disorder. So. Yeah. 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 And I would be in that kind of percent. who's like, I remember when I was on fucking Weight Watchers, I was one of the people who would weigh people in Weight Watchers. And I was like, all these other people can't lose weight because they're so fucking lazy. Not like me. I'm dedicated. I'm desperate to be thin. So I would do anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's fine. I would have done anything. But my body was like, bitch, I don't fucking think so. And so I didn't have that control to be able to do that. Because my body <laughs> no, was no. Smart. And if you did, it would have meant you had an eating disorder, which is yeah. not okay, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so I see it like if you uh, don't complete a diet, that your brain is so fucking magical and strong and incredible that it saved you from this thing. So I don't see it as failing at all. I, I, I see it as as people having really cool bodies and brains. So yeah, your body is trying to protect you. And isn't that an amazing thing that yeah. it, was, it was trying to trying to do that for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you um, get any feedback on like ridiculous diets from you the audience? People, I asked my audience about ridiculous diets. 
everyone said the grapefruit diet and i think that's what your people said too <laughs> which is funny because it's like what i never did but no <laughs> I, I hate grapefruit it's too it's too bitter for me so uh yeah but that is a pretty ridiculous i think like that's the cornerstone of shit diets right not that there are any good diets but it's like the the kind of the celebrity of shit diets you know it's it's like, it's got longevity. It was like, you know, the Dick Clark of diets or whatever. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but, you know, it's got Dick in the name. Sounds good to me. Who is this Dick yeah, Clark? I had, to, I had to look it up because I was like, does it just mean eating grapefruit? Or it was like, no, but it's like grapefruit with every meal, which I feel would give me a yeast infection. So Oh, <laughs> I thought it was just eating grapefruit. Is it not? Eating grapefruit, no? You have to eat no, it with every meal. It's like, it's like, um... Well, I did a quick Google search and it, there's, there's many variations of it. It's been around since the thirties. Um, but it's, I think it's like a very low calorie diet with the addition of grapefruit at every meal, like drinking and eating, I, I believe. It's magic. Yeah. It sounds magic. Oh, it sounds just magic. Like, I can like feel my mouth. Oh, now. Oh yeah. Now I can too. I, oh, my teeth. You know? Yeah. No. I like I grapefruit, but not. Doesn't sound fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I don't want to, like, I like grapefruit, but not. Not, no, thank you. No, no, no. Have you ever done any ridiculous diets? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's so many, so many, but the, I made up one myself at one point in time where I was basically just like, like I tried to replace all these foods with broccoli. <laughs> just used to, I was eating like bowls full of broccoli. Um, well, like, so you'd have like broccoli on toast and like, no, 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 no. It was just like, instead of like having like pasta with dinner, I would have broccoli. Like it was just like, and I don't even know why. Like I, I just remember it was this thing where I was like, I'm doing the broccoli diet. Like I made it up myself. You just made it up. It was before you I was going to, to, to um, you could have had like bro broccoli as the new grapefruit. I mean, you needed to push this. You could have been the new fancy I, diet. I could make like millions of dollars probably, I right? I should probably do that no. you should do that i mean come on now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was before i was going to a uh, abitha and in, in when i was like 23 and i was like so determined to like be this was in the generation of like you know when friends was on tv and like paris mm -hmm. hilton and like people were like rail thin like mm -hmm. that was like the standard right and um anyways it didn't work out so what? <laughs> don't try that at home shame 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 what at that time was the culture in canada uh to have loads of shows of people going to like abitha you know spanish um places and flash their tits was that a big thing <laughs> if in england it was oh, that yeah, same yeah. Time? you show tits on tv a lot more there yeah. I don't Eve that what I I think there were elements of that like I remember there was a show with Tara Reid which was like it was called like Wild On with Tara Reid oh the Wild On was a show and then okay, there was like okay. Wild On with Tara Reid there was a lot of that because I remember because I was uh I'm a little bit I'm a few years younger than you and so I remember at that time I wasn't quite yet like 18 so maybe I was like 15 and uh being watching all of those shows being like as an adult, you have to go to Ibiza and you have to flash your tits for the boys. And I just remember being like, oh, I need, I need to I need to get like surgery to become thin so I can flash my tits at the boys because that's what it is to be an adult. Like I just thought it was an inevitable part of my life that most of the time I'd be flashing my tits while on a bus with a camera crew. And it's not that was yet like a real. Camera. That was a real early 2000s, like late 90s, like thing. Yeah, it was was like like flashing I, but you know what I never saw it when I was there I never did it myself so what's the craziest uh or the most ridiculous um uh one that you've done uh the most of mine were, were pretty mainstream but the one that I remember doing is thinking because I was still very young that to lose weight your food had to have no flavor and so I remember almost only exclusively eating boiled pasta and nothing else, no sauce on it, because I thought the lack of flavor is what made you thin. And so it, it made no sense, but dieting makes no sense. And obviously I was, I was fat. So yeah, 
that oh one my God. and that just sounds like so awful like yeah. it's just so awful to, to yeah. do that oh yeah and I so, was still in my mind pasta is kind of like just such a boring food and now I've just made that connection and I know why is because of that oh interesting yeah, yeah interesting. I was like why would you have pasta it's so boring but there's actually lots of delicious pasta so oh but, yeah I love it yeah yeah, yeah. wow wow yeah. um should we wrap it up then yes let's wrap it up because I'm gonna go dog sitting some doggies and you're gonna go um not not dog sitting not human sitting because it's your child um so yeah you would you just say called being a parent that's what it's called forgot the words you go be a parent i go be a dog sitter so where can people find you summer people can find me at thebodyimagecoach.com uh and or anywhere at summer in and in but uh you can get a free 10-day body confidence makeover at my website which is thebodyimagecoach.com what about you Vinny? Uh, well, you can find me at fiercefatty.com. My podcast is Fierce Fatty. And if you go onto fiercefatty.com, the first thing you'll see is get the Fierce Fatty Body Love Roadmap. Press the button to download it. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. Perfect. So, yes. Oh, I have, I have a podcast called Eat the Rules, too. Thank you. No one wants to know about your fucking podcast, so Jesus. <laughs> trying to get we know you have zero listeners to your podcast it's not true so that has like a gajillion listeners um well it's been so lovely thank you for listening yeah I thanks for tuning that... in everyone who came live i'm surprised when i see people listening live i'm like hello people hi hello hello so yeah, yeah thanks for for listening everybody and uh we'll see you on the next episode in two weeks Rock on. Okay. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the episode. And if you feel ready to get serious about this work and want to know when the doors open to Fierce Fatty Academy, which is my signature program where I teach all about how to overcome your fat phobic beliefs and learn to love your fat body, then go to fiercefatty.com forward slash waitlist. Again, that is fiercefatty.com forward slash waitlist to get your name on the waitlist for when Fierce Fatty Academy, my signature program, opens. 